Salem is. He, he always is fashionable. You know. Um, the 9th of January at 2 o'clock, welcome to the planning committee meeting for Brighton and Hove City Council. Um, just to remind you as usual that this is being webcast and capable of repeated viewing indeed, so I'd be grateful if everyone remembers to turn their um, cell phones to silent or vibrate um, so it doesn't um, go off. It has been known to happen. And <laughs> So thank you very much. Um, first of all, turning to procedural business, um, have we got any substitutes? Um, Councillor Rufus for Councillor Phillips. Thank you very much. And uh, any declarations of interest on, sorry? Oh, sorry, Councillor Norman. Sorry, I didn't see you there. And Norman for Councillor Carroll Theobald. Thank you. And any declarations of interest or lobbying that um, anyone feels they should mention? No, thank you. Um, there's no reason to exclude the press or public. It's um, all as per the agenda sheet. And uh, hello, Councillor Wells. And <coughs> hello there. Um, um, I'd just like to remind the public that this li a licensing panel is a quasi-judicial meeting, so it should be the members of the public should not discuss things. If you want to have a conversation, be glad if well, you're welcome to go outside and do so, but not in the chamber or up in the gallery. Thank you. And Chair's communications, uh, um, oh, I'll go back to that. Um, um, item E with Dean Road, that one's been withdrawn, so that might be coming back to us at some other point, but that won't be discussed today. So if anybody does happen to have come along with a particular interest in that, we won't be discussing it. And the minutes of the previous meeting, owing to the, um, the Christmas period, there's been a procedural delay in finalising those, so we'll have those ready shortly. Um, and will be circulated as per usual and then made public uh, on the next meeting towards the end of the last day of the month. Um, um, there's no public questions this time. And before we proceed, are there any applications that members think should be the subject of a site visit? Councillor Jones? Yeah, um, 26A St Martin's Place. I, I looked at the plans and the, the mock-ups and I still find it really... Um, hard to work out how this structure will sit next to the existing buildings and how it will sit in its site. And I'm, I would, I'd really like to visit. And it's one afternoon I can actually go on a site visit. So I'd be interested to know if other members would be interested on a site visit to St. Martin's Place. I visited it myself and um, strolled around quite a lot and I'd be happy to do that. Others would like to second that? Right, okay, thank you, Councillor Hyde. Um, in that case, we'll put this to a vote that we item, um, which one is it now, item B, 26A, St. Martin's Place. All those who would be in favour of going to visit this on an official site visit? Eight. 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 Yes, a anybody happen to oppose it? So we've got a couple of abstentions, I think. Okay, so that item will be um, <coughs> temporarily with, um, deferred, um, deferred um, until the end of the month. So if anyone has come to speak or anything about 26A St Martin's Place, you're perfectly willing to stay and see how a planning meeting works, if that would be useful for you. Otherwise, um, come back in um, January the 30th, I believe it is, that Wednesday. So um, thank you very much. So we'll now, what we do with planning um, um, meetings is we take the major applications first, um, and then we move to the minor, so-called minor applications, when um, we take speakers first and then go back to the order, uh, the printed agenda order. So first of all, we'll now turn to um, application A, which is BH 2012-03250, stroke which is Prince's House, 53 Queen's Road. Um, <clears throat> Uh, it's for full planning, um, uh, pl planning permission. The recommendation is minded to grant. The report begins on page one of the agenda. And I'll now hand over to the case officer to present this to us. Thanks very much. Okay. Welcome to Councillor McCafferty. Afternoon, members. Um, since the late items list has closed, a letter has been received from the agents for the application and uh, they've supplied an indicative revised basement car park layout to demonstrate that they can um, get some disabled parking provision and cycle parking into that layout. And the site plan is in front of you, and planning permission sought for the change of use of the ground and first floor of the Prince's House building from offices to language school use. 
no external changes are proposed to the building. Um, the application as I said, relates to the Prince's House building, which is a four-storey building with a basement car park, which is situated on the southern corner of the junction of Queen's Road and Upper Gloucester Road. The site forms part of the West Hill Conservation Area, and the building adjoins number 52 Queen's Road, which is a Grade 2 listed building, which you can see on the, on the left-hand side there. And that's a view from the north of the building. Um, you can just see on the left there's a communal entrance to the offices and there's an entrance there exclusively for the ground floor. Um, and the ground floor and first floors of the building are currently vacant. The ground floor of the building, as I said, has got its, its own inset entrance, which is on the northern side. Um, that's got a security shutter. And the remainder of the building has a main entrance, which you step up to on the corner of the building. And that leads to a communal stairway, which goes up to the upper floors of the building. And there's also an entrance into the ground floor accommodation. And the ground floor accommodation has also got a fire escape entrance on North Gardens, which is on the western side of the site. And the first floor, again, consists of an open plan office area, which is accessed from that communal staircase. And it's also got a fire escape route at the rear. Um, this is the basement car park. And it's accessed from a ramp from North Gardens, which you can see there. The vehicular entrance has got a security shutter, and there's also a, a door on the pedestrian access there, which requires an access card to get into. Uh, and the ground and first floors of the building are now are vacant and have been so since August 2010. Since this time, the property has been marketed, and the current application seeks consent to, to change the use of the ground and first floors to a language school use, as I said. And the history of the sites provided in section three of the report and the application has been subject to consultation and the responses are set out in section five of the report we received one neighbor letter in response and the key issues are set out in section eight of the reports and relate to the following issues uh, the principle of development is considered having regard to policy m5 of the brighton hove local plan um, and it's considered that the proposal accords with that policy as the ground and first floors of the building have been vacant and marketed for a considerable period and the proposed replacement use would also generate employment. In regard to amenity, the proposed use could involve significant numbers of students within the building and associated comings and goings and Queen's Road and the junction with Upper Gloucester Road, which are up on the screen at the moment, are busy thoroughfares but North Gardens, to, which is to the west of the site here, is of a predominantly residential character and to ensure that the immunity of neighbouring residents such as those in North Garden is protected we recommended conditions which restrict the hours of use and restrict the use of the accesses onto, Queen, onto um, North Gardens and also to secure a management plan for the operation of the use. Um, in regards to sustainable transport, there's a as I said there's a basement car park with 18, and there are 18 spaces which are allocated to the ground and first floors of the building. We've recommended conditions to secure further details of disabled parking provision and cycle parking provision. And it's also recommended that a contribution towards sustainable transport be secured by legal agreement. So in conclusion, on the, on the basis of what we've just discussed, the application is recommended as minded to grant, subject to the completion of a legal agreement and the conditions and informative set out in section 11 of the report. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, there's no speakers on this one, so we'll go straight to members' questions. Do we have questions? Councillor Hyde. Thank you. Um, I, I wonder what form the management plan will take, because obviously there are t possibly 200 students on the premises at any one time, and I think one of the issues might be where would they smoke, um, how many would be allowed outside. Have you had any information or any um, ideas on the management plan at this stage I appreciate it is a condition thank you and how many parking I dismissed that flash I'm pleased to see that we do have um, the disabled parking and the cycle parking as well now have we lost any of the um, standard parking places thank you this is the indicative layout we've had from the applicants and there's, I, d I think what they're showing isn't it might be a loss of a space down the bottom there to get the disabled spaces in and the cycle parking they think they've got space for 
Um, and in regards to the management plan, we, we don't have details of that, but we, we envisage that it would include all those issues you've mentioned, which is um, comings and goings in and out of the building, any congregation outside, what, how that would be supervised, where students would be encouraged to go on breaks and, and that sort of thing. They, there isn't a specific outdoor area within the site, but we're confident that we can resolve that through the management plan. Thank you very much. Councillor Norman. Thank you, Chair. I um, welcome the information about the disabled car parking facilities. Uh, it's, it's just a, a query. Is there lift access from the car park to the uh, ground floor and the first floor? Thank you. Yes, there is lift access from the car park and there's lift access within the building. The, just go back to the, that photo, the, the ground floor layout, the ground floor entrance you can see on the right there actually has a level access off the street. So there's level access into the site there and there is also lift access from the car park. Thank you. Um, if I might, um, Jonathan, it's um, perhaps picking up on something Councillor Hyde said. <coughs> um, as we're aware, um, at Councillor Davies Transport Committee next week, the um, station gateway plan is coming back and Councillor Hyde and others were suggesting the problems of congregation and so forth. H how do you anticipate this fitting in with how the gateway proposals for the rearrangement of pavements and roadways and so forth, might, how this might fit in with that. I'm trying to, it's a bleak um, junction. Um, I t I, speaking for myself, I tend to avoid the whole road and go down the system of Twittons just to the west. It's a nice little trip across time. I highly recommend that down North Gardens and keep going south. It's an adventure. Um, we've got a plan up there of the gateway proposal and you can see the site at the bottom and part of the proposal that was consulted on is widening the pavements directly in front of, of the building at that junction. So I think were, were that to come forward, I think it, it would possibly alleviate some of the concerns we've got about people congregating outside. But our view is whether that comes forward or not, we're, we're confident that a management plan would resolve any issues regarding use of that entrance. Good. Okay, thank you. Um, any further questions of Jonathan? No. Would you like to go into a debate now on this? Councillor Carden. Oh, sorry, Councillor McCafferty had a question. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Jonathan. Um, I note under A12 um, that there has been no clarification on likely hours of use, but then I note under A14 that we're talking about opening till as late as 10 p.m. Mondays to Saturdays. Um, as you've referred in your report, once you get off the main thoroughfare, Actually, this is densely populated area, and I'm, I'm just wondering why, what, why there's been an evaluation from the local planning authority as to why 10 o'clock during the week. I, I feel as if that is potentially slightly too late for such a densely populated area. Um, I'm just wondering if you can help me with that query. Thanks. Yeah, our, our concerns on amenity are really, as you've identified, the large numbers and potentially the comings and goings. Uh, the conditions we've recommended restrict the accesses onto North Gardens for basically emergency use or to access the car park only. So we envisage that most, the, the large majority of the comings and goings will all be onto those entrances onto the busy junction. So I, uh, our view is that most of the pedestrian activity will be likely to disperse from those entrances into the, the busier thoroughfares. So as you said, we didn't have the, the applicant had said that the primary use really is going to be largely office hours, Monday to Friday, but there was a possibility of some evening and weekend use on occasion. So the reason we've come up with those proposed hours as a restriction is to allow those occasional uses, ensure they don't go into <coughs> significantly later hours when even the busier roads would be quieter. So I think that, that's where we came from. Okay, any further questions on, in light of Phelan's one? Councilor yes, thank, thank you. I wonder what, what the definition of occasional usage and uh, usage is um, and, and how would we be able to restrict them if they then decided that perhaps they wanted evening lessons until 10. Have I not read all the details in the report? Thank you, Jeanette. The condition doesn't um, delve into occasional use. We've taken a view that they're the appropriate and reasonable hours to condition this use to. We, we're not looking at drilling down into what occasional might be. So members might wish to take a view on the hours of um, operation. 
Thanks. Um, any further questions? No? So should we move into the debate now? That's debate, Councilman. Yes. You're going to start yeah. off. Um, on the same point, then, it's my humble opinion that 10 o'clock during the week is simply too late. And I'm, I'm just wondering how, then, can we attach to it an informative or can we condition, even though the report says 10 p.m. during the weekend on Saturdays, can we reduce that even by one hour, I think, that the quality of life for residents in the immediate area would be made so much better, even if we reduce it by that one hour? And I'm just wondering the parameters of the debate therein, please. Thank you. Would you like to come in at that point? <coughs> Members, you can propose that if you so wish, if you're concerned about the amenity of the residents who live nearby. I'd happily propose that then, if Would I can. Yes, okay. Would you? And, and I'd happily second. Do you want to do that formally, Councillor McCafferty, just to explain what you're proposing? Yeah. <laughs> if a reason for it. Yes. Um, you've referred to other things that are happening beyond the life of this application. I'm wary, as probably the entirety of planning committee is aware also, that there will be a hotel opening just further up on Queen's Road. I'm wary of the cumulative impact of a number of <coughs> applications at this particular site. It may not be relevant to the life of this particular application, but my concerns still relate to the fact that um, there will be noise and potential for antisocial behaviour um, I'm not castigating <laughs> students from overseas by saying any of that. What, what I hope I'm suggesting is that um, busy activity happening until 10 p.m. in what is off the thoroughfare quite dense residential, I feel as if we need to, to, to lower that even by one hour. I think that would be more acceptable. Thank you. Councillor Hyde, you're happy to second happy that? Happy to second that, yes. as stated. Okay, in that case, we'll... So to just be really clear, Councillor McCafferty, it's condition four, is it? Uh, the UC of I permitted shall not be open except between the hours of eight and 2200 hours, Monday to Saturday, and nine and 2000 hours on bank holidays. Is that the one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you're proposing that the eight to 22 comes down to 21. In that case, we'll put this to the vote now. Can I... Oh, yeah. Have a debate. And then before you think that's right. Okay, we'll take it in light of the debate. Yeah, good idea. Okay, in that case, let's move on to debate. Now, any points of debate to raise? Uh, I think I can call Councillor Cobb first. Councillor Bing. No, no, I didn't see you. Sorry. All right, you go first then, Councillor Carden. Okay. Councillor Cobb. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Councillor Carden, for putting ladies first. Um, I... I'm actually not in favour of reducing the hours. I don't feel that it's right to penalise one property or business in favour of another because of a cumulative effect in the area. So you're penalising this, this property because of the hotel. This is a site <coughs> that's a gateway from the station. <coughs> Excuse me. And I think it will, it's going to be quite heavily trafficked and, and I, I don't think that, that being open until 10 would have that great an impact. So I wouldn't support that proposal. Thank you, Chair. Right, thank you. Then, sorry about that, Councillor Carden. Speak up now. Right. Now, that corner is probably one of the most dangerous junctions in Brighton. There's no doubt about it. I mean, the last few months since I've been travelling to and from the OSCH, I've been coming up there. And buses at that stop there have been two or three of them piled up there, stacked on that corner. There's bollards across half the turnings up there and it's one hell of a mess. And I, for one, couldn't make a judgment now until six times as I know it's going to happen at that site with the station because I think it's dangerous. If you, where stu students being what students are, they're going to congregate on that corner, come out for their bag or their can of coke or whatever they did. And I think it's extremely dangerous. And I don't think enough... Um, thought has been given to that particular corner. You want to go and have a look at it sometime, because as I've well, done, I'm good. really concerned about it. Thank you. Further points of debate? Councillor Rufus. Yeah, um, I, I think I've been focusing on the issues around that corner, um, and it was interesting to see the reconfiguration in the, the station gateway <coughs> project that was put up earlier to show that it's a bit larger there. Um, 
And I think that you look at that and, yeah, you can kind of imagine how it would be possible for the students to have enough space to get, gather out there. But I'm still concerned about that corner, not so much from the students gathering, but because, as I think it was Councillor Cobb just now said, it's one of the you know, heaviest traffic walking routes in the city for people coming down from the station. And on that corner, um, people do duck across the road quite quickly and need clear space on the other side. And I, I'm worried that the um, numbers of people that would gather out there would create an obstacle for people trying to cross the road. So rather than being a problem for people from the school itself, there would be a problem there for people trying to move through the area. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm satisfied with the idea of the management plan for the school in terms of the people outside there being sufficient to really police that or to address the problems. Um, I'm very happy with the idea of that building coming back into use. Um, I don't have an in-principle problem with, with the change of use to this type of premises, but the impact that the numbers of people that would be gathering there would have does cause me concern. I think about what it's like on the wide area of pavement opposite the entrance to Pavilion Gardens from the north, and I'm trying to transpose that into this location, and mm. it, it gives me some pause to consider this. I'm not quite sure yet whether I'm content to see this one be approved on the basis of that, that aspect alone. Mm. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Rufus. Further points of debate? Sorry, Councillor Jones. Yeah, uh, so Councillor Rufus's points are interesting. I take on Councillor Carden's points as well. I mean, I keep thinking about the language school opposite Pavilion Gardens and the number of, of students that congregate out there, and there's just enough room for people to congregate. And students will congregate en masse outside this building, and I'm not really sure that we've got a clear enough picture of what this management plan will entail. So I'm, I do have concerns about that. In terms of the change of use of the building, a language school being there, I'm, I'm fine with that. I think it's, it's a, it's a good, good use for the building. But I am concerned about the management plan. Thank you. Further contributions? No, in that case, we'll go to the vote. Mm -hmm. but this is application um, A, um, which is BH20120 slash Oh, sorry, sorry, we were going to, I was <laughs> jumping the gun there. Um, we're happy at this point, we'll go to the vote on Councillor McCafferty's condition. So, um, all those in favour at this stage, if this is passed um, or not, if it were to be passed, it would be with the condition proposed by Councillor McCafferty, which is essentially to limit the opening hours to 2100 hours, 9pm. Can I see all those in favour of that condition during, or was it during the week? Nine. Uh, all those against? Two. And that's no abstentions. So we now move um, to the um, substantive with that um, taken in mind. Application BH20120-03250, which is for full planning permission at Prince's House, 53 Queen's Road in Brighton. The recommendation is minded to grant. Can I see all those in favour, please? Seven. All those against? One. Any abstentions? One. So that is in fact carried. Uh, sorry, sorry, three. Yes, so that is carried. Thank you very much. We now move on to the uh, minor applications, and as we have speakers for um, 26 Coombe Road, which is application D, we'll go to that one first. Um, um, so can I ask the uh, presenting officer to come forward, Aidan, please. And that's on page, I'll just remind you, page 49. There's items on the late list which I'll refer to at the relevant stage of this presentation. The application seeks planning permission for the replacement of the existing timber framed shop front with an aluminium shop front. That's the existing shop front in situ. This is the existing terrace and you can see the application site here. And 
This is the application site in comparison with the neighboring shop front. And this is further down showing the run of units. The site relates to a two-story terrace building on the southern side of Coombe Road. There's an A1 retail unit, which is a chemist, to the ground floor with a residential flat above. The retail unit is seated within a parade of shops that continue up the junction to Riley Street to the east. This, the road slopes steeply upwards from east to west, as you could have seen in those photos. The proposed alteration is to change the design and material of the existing shop front, removing the existing central recess and replacing the traditional timber design with a more modern metal frame. This is the existing shop front in elevation form. Important to note here is the existing recess, the high stall rises, and the glazing dividers with fan light above the window itself, the door itself. This is the proposed shop front, which is flush. The stall rises have been removed, as has a lot of the detailing of the actual shop front itself. This is the existing shop front in plan form, and there you can see the recess. And this is the proposed shop front plan, which you can see is flush the whole way along. The complete planning history is provided in section three of the report, and the application has been subject to consultations, the responses set out in section five of the report and on the late list. The key issues are set out in section eight of the report. The proposed shop front would run flush along the frontage of the unit with a centrally located entrance, thus losing the existing recess entrance and also removing the traditional features as previously mentioned. The use of aluminium frames is considered an inappropriate material within this building. The existing shop front is timber framed which appears in good condition and there's no justification in design terms to replace the existing with aluminium frames which fail to respect the traditional character of the building and the street scene. Other than number 20 Coombe Road, which is this property here, all of the properties in the parade have timber framed shop fronts. The majority of these are traditional in design and make a positive contribution to the character of the area, which includes the application property. On the basis of the above, the application is recommended for refusal for the reasons set out in section 11 of the report, which is due to the inappropriate design and materials which would detract from the character and appearance of the property, the Coombe Road street scene and the wider area. Thank you, Aidan. Um, we do have a speaker on this one, Mr. Patel. If you'd like to come forward to the tables there with the label on, and um, um, if you press the button on the console there, it will bring the microphone on, and you have three minutes to speak. And once you're ready, and then I'll let you know when you've got 20 seconds left. If you can press the button, then that will make the red light come on, and you're set to go. That's it. Keep it pressed. That's it. You've got the latest um, technology here. <laughs> thank okay. You. Uh, thank you afternoon. very much. Three minutes from thank, now. Thank, thank you. you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm acting on behalf, I'm the shop fitter and uh, the designer for this particular property. It's uh, currently a pharmacy, and we're upgrading the, the internally and hoping to uh, upgrade the external as well. As you can see on this first slide, um, here's the existing shop front. Um, it is in poor condition. It's, it's rotting from inside and outside, so that's hence one of the reasons for replacement. Uh, currently, the recess has a step, so the actual frontage doesn't comply uh, for DDA, so we have difficulty in getting wheelchair access into the premises. So that's one of the main reasons for changing it as well. Um, um, within the vicinity, within walking distance, there's various uh, other shop fronts. I mean, the one on the slide there, that's a UPVC. Uh, Coombe Road convenience store, that's an aluminium shop front, that's a couple of hundred yards away. And also further down, that is also an aluminium shop front as well. So, you know, as far as we're concerned, we, we are keeping in tune with what is in the vicinity. And there's another one, which is also an aluminium shop front. Um, no, it's a bit upside down. Substantial amount of uh, uh, investment has been made. This is the internal view. This is a mock-up. It's currently being refurbished as we speak. Um, it's going to be quite a, 
an up, mar up market, updated pharmacy, a real uh, contribution for the area. And one of the main reasons is the uh, disability access as well, which will allow uh, my client to serve his local community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, have we any questions for Mr. Patel, please, from members? Uh, Councillor Cobb. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I just wondered if there were a lot of wheelchair users in the vicinity, because it is rather a steep hill, Coombe Road. I have been told from my client that he does have uh, a fair few people who uh, come in with wheelchair, uh, as a, and currently what he's having to do, he's having to serve them from the door at the front. Any further questions for Mr. C Councillor Rufus? Is there, um, it being a pharmacy, is there any sort of, um, you, you describe the inside of the wood frame at the moment as being rotting. I mean, are, are there any sort of um, clinical or safety issues in terms of needing to replace the front of the shop in the way you propose? Um, th th does it have any sort of health or um, clinical a a impact on the people that you're serving there, or is it purely a commercial and uh, a sort of, the retail aspect of the pharmacy that you're concerned with? The, the currently, the, the frontage is, is, is in a poor state, so it would definitely need replacing. Uh, the glass is not secure. Um, it's not tough on glass either, so um, our recommendation would be to change it. Okay, any further questions? Thank you very much then, Mr. Patel. If you'd like to take your seat again. Oh, another question, Councillor McCafferty. Thanks, Mr. Motel. Um, I'm not doubting at all that you may need to replace your shop front. Has there been any sense at your client's end about what, what our policy says about replacement of shop fronts or, or, or what indeed we say about if there's something historic like <coughs> this, we seek to preserve or enhance it? Has that come up in any conversations that you or your client have had? Thank you. I actually got, I was involved in the initial design of the internal and external. And uh, in our view, we looked at the area and uh, within walking distance, there were five other aluminium shop fronts. So we took the view that uh, we would be okay. Thank you. Any further questions in light of Councillor McCafferty's one? No? Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Patel. If you could take your seat again, we'll continue. Now and move on to questions for um, Aidan. Members, any questions of Aidan about this application? Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Gilby. Yes, I can't, I can't quite see from the entrance. Um, the disability access, is the curb sort of under the door that they can't get in? Because um, that looks like sort of um, some tiles outside which are quite nice for the character of the area. Yeah, the entrance has existing. Um, the tiles look like they're flush and then there's a small threshold step up, which is just there, which then goes into the shop itself. Councillor Rufus. Um, we just heard about the, the disability access issue. Um, and looking at the, the shop front, I, could, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to remember from having walked up there, but I can't specifically remember that shop. Um, it, it appears that the door may be quite narrow. Is it something that would be sufficient for, for instance, mobility scooters to get through? And what would your view be to applications to make amendments to the way the shop front is laid out, keeping most of it, but having to make changes? I, mean, I, I don't know, would changes be required to meet disability access? And how would you view that if that was the overriding issue? Councillors, we... Um there was no pre-application advice taken from us in relation to the submission of the application. We would have been very happy to work with the applicant on a more traditional scheme, which um, tried to achieve the needs in terms of the, the DDA as well. Um, Aidan can try and answer your specific questions. The, uh, the width of the existing door is 900 mil, so 0.9 of a metre. Um, that would, I have thought, be in sufficient width to allow for disabled access. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Rufus. Yeah, um, a, a follow-up but different type of question. I was just wondering about then um, the, 
the whole of the front has been described as being rotten on the inside. Um, you know, take that at face value. If renovation or repair is required on that, would you still require it to be single glazed wood framed? Would you would you allow for um, replacement in kind, if you like, to, to meet modern um, requirements of energy efficiency, etc.? We're more than happy to look at schemes and work with the applicant to get something which actually meets modern day standards but actually has a more traditional design than proposed and we would welcome that. Thanks, Sadan. Further questions? Shall we move into debate now? Who would like to start? Uh, Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Chairman. Well, I absolutely agree with the officer recommendation. I appreciate that there are some aluminium fronts here, but as we all know, particularly those who have been on the planning committee for a while, policies do change. I know this shop really, really well, as my friend's mother used to work there. So, <laughs> and I used to be in the church quite up the road, but obviously that was a long time ago. Um, mm. I, we've heard today from the officer that a traditional front could be provided with um, adequate um, disability allowance to have a wheelchair or battery car, whatever we like to call them. Um, it, it is an attractive shop front. I particularly like the recess feature, um, which the officer is obviously keen uh, to, to maintain. Um, and I just think we could have a much better, if, if the applicant um, is not content with the access um, and the situation he has now. We've heard today that pre-application advice is available, and I truly think we could come up with, a, with a, a suitable replacement with the correct glazed feature in it of a traditional design, maintaining the recess and to the satisfaction of all. It may be a little more expensive, but I think that if that's the case, so be it. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, thank you, Councillor Hyde. Further points? Councillor Rufus. Yeah, thanks. I, I mean, I, I wanted to explore whether there was any sort of um, practical need, either from the healthcare um, provision or access point of view, that required the change. Um, and uh, I, I can understand the desire to, to make the change from, from the applicant. Um, I, I would imagine one of the reasons would be loss of trading space by having that step included outside rather than inside the building as well. I do understand their reasons for applying for it, but um, having asked the questions I did about access and the, the facilities, or the opportunities to make changes to the front within line, uh, with, in line with the um, with planning requirements to, to maintain this sort of shop frontage, um, I wasn't convinced that there was a, an overwhelming need to make those changes to satisfy all the things that the, client, uh, the applicant wanted, so I'm, I'm happy to vote for refusing. Thank you very much, Councillor Rufus. And yes, I think the applicant sort of laid some emphasis on the interior of what looked to me rather like flying saucers on the ceiling. Um, but there's no reason you can't have a traditional front shop front and rather like the TARDIS, you then go into something completely different. Um, any further points of debate? No, in that case, the, we'll move to the vote. This is application um, <coughs> D, VH2012 slash 02. Double eight two at 26 Coombe Road, Brighton. The recommendation is to refuse. Can I see all those in favour of refusing this application? Eight. All those against? And abstentions? Three. Thank you very much. So that is refused. We're now moving on to application C, the last item, in fact, which is BH2012-02416 which is um, deferred from last time, 151, 151A Marine Parade, Rottingdean. It's for full planning permission. The recommendation is to grant. The report begins on page 31. I'll now hand over to Jonathan again to present this one. Thank you. And I did trust that members did see some of the samples that were available. We can, if necessary, pause to have a further look. May, may I just pop over and have a look, please, Chair? If we can have a pause, we've got plenty of time. And <laughs> we'll pause for two or three minutes, as long as it takes, just so we get an idea of what the materials involved are. The crux of this one, I think.
Councillor Hamilton. Hold on, let me just see what... Ross, Ross has amended... Hand over to Ross. He's amended. Sorry, sorry. Okay, can I just bring Ross in at this point? But wait for the others to come back and then we... So everyone can hear. Okay, Ross? Yeah, sorry, members. That's a... It's a mistake on the actual agenda front sheet. So the, the description on the, the report itself is correct. I think I emailed around when these went out just before Christmas, so it's just on the hard copy that's wrong, but on the ones that went online and were published um, on the internet, it, it, it's correct. It's got the right description. So the one, one of the, yeah, the one on the report is the correct one. Thanks. Sharp-eyed, Councillor Hamilton. Okay, we'll go back now to the presentation. Thank you. Um, there is one item on the late list relating to this, but it was just a minor correction on a word in the report. Um, this is the site um, it, and consent. The application was, sorry, deferred at the previous committee, which is on the 12th of December, and that was to allow for those further details of the materials to be submitted. Um, and consent sought for the demolition of the existing two dwellings on the site and the erection of three replacement dwellings and also the associated hard and soft landscaping and boundary treatments. Um, and that's a block plan which shows the existing <coughs> dwellings. And there's, there's a main dwelling here and there's a smaller build dwelling which is sort of an, an annex style dwelling. Um, it's a corner plot on the eastern side of the junction of Marine Drive and Cranley Avenue. Um, there's no formal separation on the site between the two dwellings so the frontage appears as one open space at present. Um, you can see on the picture on the right there the plot's on an elevated level in relation to Marine Drive and this in conjunction with the corner location of the site gives it a prominence in the street scene. Um, and you can see on the left there is a view down Cranley Avenue, <coughs> that's number two Cranley Avenue next to it. The wider character of the area is mixed with traditional and contemporary single and story, two story properties with corner buildings usually being of a larger scale. Some more photos here on the right, probably got a better view of the, into the site there. This is the main dwelling and that smaller chalet style dwelling. And this is just a view looking at the corner of the dwelling. <coughs> Here you can see the relationship with the property to the east, which is here, it's 153A Marine Drive, which is sort of chalet style, albeit raised level with a, a garage below and the site alongside. And this is just a view from within the site of 153A Marine Drive. And this is back on Cranley Avenue and the, the vehicular access into the site, and that's number two Cranley Avenue to the left. This is the proposed block plan, and the proposed development would subdivide the site into three new plots with, with vehicular access from Cranley Avenue as it is at present. Each plot would run vertically down the site from the rear of the site to the marine drive frontage, and it, all of the dwellings are, are set back from that marine drive frontage to retain some of the open character that's there at present. And this is just a run through the proposed plans. So We've got the ground floor plan here. On the left, it's a, a six-bed dwelling, which is spread over three storeys. The top story is rooms in the roof, and that's in a similar position to the existing main dwelling. And in the middle, we've got a three-bed, two-story dwelling, and then to the eastern side is a three-bed uh, chalet-style bungalow um, alongside 153A uh, A Marine Drive. And you can see the parking here, which is accessed off Cranley Avenue, which would serve each of the houses. And that's the first four layouts. Again, the three houses. And moving up, we've got the rooms in the roof on the, on the larger house and just the roof plans of the, of the other two dwellings. This is an elevation at the, at the bottom. We've got the existing street scene with the two dwellings and as proposed at the top with the three dwellings there across the site. Um, and the, have some more here. this is looking from Cranley Avenue. So again, number two there, the vehicular access and parking and that new dwelling on the corner. And you can see the existing relationship there. And that's a bit more of a detailed view of that street elevation onto Cranley Avenue. And that's slightly closer looking at the elevation onto Marine Drive. 
And the, in regards to history, the complete planning histories in section three of the report of note are some previous refusals and dismissed appeals for larger scale residential development on the site. The application has been the subject of consultation and the responses are set out in section five of the report. The key issues for the application are set out in section eight of the report and, re and relate to the following. In regards to the principle of the development, the site is located within the built up area of the city and subject to acceptable density and scale, therefore suitable for residential development. The density of the development is considered to be in keeping with the character of development which surrounds the site. The scale of the eastern and middle dwelling are considered typical of the character of the area. The, the western dwelling proposed on the corner is larger, but it's felt that this larger scale can be accommodated due to that corner position. In regards to design, the, the proposed designs are of a contemporary character, but when taking into account the mix of property styles along Marine Drive, mm. it's considered this will cause no harm to the character or appearance of the street scene to which it relates or to the wider area. And the design which is now proposed is considered to overcome the concerns raised within the previous refused applications and also the inspector's decisions relating to those applications. Um, and following the deferral of the application at the previous committee, as members have noted, there are some samples to the side there. Um, and that's really to provide a further explanation of the materials proposed um, in an indicative fashion. In regard to amenity, um, the units proposed are considered to provide an adequate standard of living accommodation, which is suitably laid out internally and provides adequate levels of outward privacy and natural light. Each of the units has an outdoor space, which on the, the western two you can see are at the front, and there are also balconies. And the easternmost dwelling, they've got, they've got the area at the front, also a small area at the back, and a, a small balcony is proposed on the front. And as such, it's in accordance with policy H05 of the local plan. A number of noise reports have been carried out seeking to address concerns regarding noise levels within the site, and that's primarily relating to the, the traffic levels on Marine Drive directly in front. And the reports that we've had have concluded that mitigation measures should be included in the development in the form of thermal double glazed windows and a passive ventilation system, and we've recommended conditions to secure those measures. In regards to neighboring amenity, there the proposed development is an increase in scale and bulk over what's there at the moment, and that would have an impact upon neighbours. Those most affected would be 153A, which is to the east, and number two, Cranley Avenue, to the north. Um, but we don't feel that it would be significantly detrimental in comparison to the existing situation. It would result in some increased overshadowing, but it's not felt that's of a magnitude which would warrant the refusal of the planning commission. And it's also noted that at the time, the previous schemes which were of a larger scale and bulk were considered by the council and the inspectors, and the impact on the amenity wasn't considered to warrant a reason for refusal. Um, we've recommended conditions to secure that um, upper floor north facing windows are obscure glazed, so they wouldn't cause overlooking onto number two Cranley Avenue. Therefore, subject to conditions, we're happy there'd be no adverse impacts on the amenity. Moving on to transport, as mentioned previously, there's an access off Cranley Avenue, parking proposed for the dwellings, and we've also got some cycle storage air, um, facilities proposed for each unit. There would be an uplift in trip generation in comparison to the, previous to the existing two dwellings, but under current short-term measure, recession measures, we wouldn't be seeking improvements to or contributions towards sustainable transport. And in regard to sustainability landscaping and nature conservation, the scheme is considered to adequately address these issues and we've also recommended conditions to secure measures in relation to all those points. Um, and in conclusion, on the basis of the above, the application is recommended to grant subject to the conditions and informative set out in section 11 of the report. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Um, do we have questions from members? Councillor Hyde. Thank you. Um, do you have um, a, a plan which shows you the um, current roof levels compared with what is proposed at all? Because sometimes we do see them, don't we? I'm concerned about the size of the corner property. It, yes, because sometimes we're presented with plans where we can have the comparison of the um, bulk and mass and roof height. That's the existing block plan there. So you can see, sorry, it's slightly smaller scale, but you can see the layout of the existing dwelling and that chalet bungalow. 
and that's to the proposed layout. So I hope you don't have them both on one plan, but I can flick between the two if that helps. My question is, I'm looking to ascertain the difference in, 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 the, in the roof heights of what's there and what is proposed. Because obviously what's there at the moment is set right back almost, almost in Cranley Avenue and these are very much fronting Marine Drive. So we've got some comparison elevations here, so that might help. This is, that's a comparison between the, the existing on the bottom and the, and the proposed above in terms of the bulk and, and roof heights. I'm just going back one. That's a view from, from the south, looking again at the existing at the bottom and the proposed. So I'll a bit more detail, Councillor Hyde. Pardon? Do, did you want some? Is that I think I'm sort of relatively... Um, secure and that's about all I'm going to be able to get at this stage yes. in terms of my question. I understand that too. Um, well, I, I did, can I just ask, um, did, did you have any concerns about this mass of um, grey slate that roof that is um, suddenly going to be appearing as you rise up from, from the western side? Because I know you said that there is, uh, there are various designs there, but the bulk of the properties there do have red roofs. I know the one next door has a a grey roof, but that was incrementally um, extended uh, against the wishes of, at the time, the planning officers and um, the residents. And now this is being set against the one that was very contentious in its time. So I do have a lot of concerns about this mass of grey slate because it is not typical of the area. There may be the odd one. Did you have any concerns? Um I think we acknowledge that the proposed designs are of a more contemporary nature than what's immediately around them. I think what we've looked at is the, the wider aspects along that road, and there, there is some variety, um, which may or may not be seen as favourable, but there, there is some variety, and we do feel that something which does appear slightly different but has taken an effort to try and incorporate more traditional forms of buildings than we saw on the previous schemes which were refused. Overall, our view is that notwithstanding the materials, we do, we do feel that it would sit comfortably in that location. Thank you. Further questions? Councillor Cobb. Thank you, Chair. Has um, any study been done into the overshadowing when the sun goes from east to west on what the west will do to the other two properties on the eastern side? We don't have a study on sunlight and daylight, but we have considered that issue and we've also looked at the previous decisions that were taken, and particularly by the appeal inspectors. And the previous schemes we were looking at were um, of a larger scale and bulk. They were sort of blocks of flats. And at that time, the inspectors felt that the impact would be acceptable on the neighbours. And to some extent, we're guided by that when looking at a new application. I can understand that on the neighbouring properties that are already there, but my concern is for the two newer properties being overshadowed by the larger new property on the west. Again, we don't have figures on that, but I think our view would be that as their primary aspect is south, whilst there will be some overshadowing earlier or later in the day, that overall the light levels they'd be receiving would be acceptable. Okay, is that okay, Councillor Cobb? Councillor Wells. Thank you, Chairman. Um, could you tell me the distance between that end house and the street? It looks like the, the wall going around that distance there, where that sh it looks like it's showing a gate on there, the corner house. Did you mean the wall to the south or the west? Uh, we to the west. Just explain again where you want the measurement from. Which, 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 will looks, which looks as though it's edging the pavement area and the wall of the house. Yes. You mean on the corner? On the Cranny Avenue side. Yes. If you, when you just showed the elevation, it looked as though it was only going to be something like about a metre. Distance between Cranley Avenue 
the, the red line, mm -hmm. which shows the wall, or the, off, the council boundary. And that, that's, well, not necessarily the side of the house. The, what's that? The, is that a window sticking out? The structure to the side. On the side elevation? Is a cycle and refuse store. It's a cycle. Cycle. Well, okay, what's, what's the distance then between that and the cycle store? From the fence here to the side here is one and a half metres. One and a half metres. Okay, that thank you. Is that okay, Councillor Wells? Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you very much. Any f further questions? No, are we moving into debate now? Who wishes to start? C Councillor Cobb. Thank you, Chair. I actually don't think that this design um, is in keeping with surrounding properties. It seems like it's a bit of a mock Tudor, and I don't think there's anything mock Tudory along there. Also, um, Properties along there that have been modernised are more modern, and this is sort of like it's modern, but trying to hold on to something old as well. And I'm afraid I'm not very keen on the blue and grey cladding and the door and window frames. All of the other window and door frames that we saw on the slides all had white frames, not, not sort of grey, which is, or blue-grey, which is more common with um, commercial properties. Thank you. Councillor Wells. Thank you, Chairman. I think, uh, just to say that I'm inclined to agree with uh, comments made by the Rottingdean Parish Council that the, the three detached houses will cons constitute an overcrowding of the site in an area which is characterised by single detached dwellings. Um, look, looking at the uh, South Street elevation uh, and the plan, uh, it does look as, as though you're cramming uh, a quart into a pint pot, so um, I'm inclined to go along with these um, objectors. Uh, another one bullet point there on the on page 35, fourth bullet, fifth bullet point down. The proposed development of three dwellings, three dwellings would be an overdevelopment of the site, and I'm inclined to agree with that. So I won't be supporting this application, Chairman. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor Wells. Further points of debate? Cou Councillor Davy, welcome for the last item on the agenda. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you have been busy at a budget scrutiny. So. Uh, did you want to say something? Oh, I thought you were leaning forward to... No, 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 no oh, just a... Oh, right. Oh, oh right, OK. <laughs> yes, well, moving on from that, uh, any further points of debate on this? No? Uh, Councillor Hyde. Yeah, I, I will concur with um, Councillor Wells, and I think this site would be much more suited to two properties rather than the three, and I do have concerns about the bulk and mass of that corner property as well. Just to add that. Thank you, thank you Councillor Hyde. Any further points in that case? Uh, um, Jeanette will clarify one point that's been raised previously. Just before you vote, Councillors, I just want the case officer to just clarify for you what the inspector's views were in relation to the um, bulk and massing, okay? On the screen there, we've got um, a previous scheme which was looked at by the inspector, um, which, as you can see, was flat roof blocks, and the inspector felt that the, the flat roof design and the mass, the massing of that at roof level, was out of keeping with surrounding development. So, and he he identifies that the surrounding properties have pitched roofs, and the, and that would be out of keeping. So just to explain that that's where this design's come from, really. It's trying to incorporate a form of roof and a form of building, which was more in keeping with surrounding development. And the, we, we feel that the matters which were of concern to the inspector have been successfully addressed, hence the recommendation. Okay, thank you very much. 
So in that case, um, thank you everybody. This is application, we'll go to the vote, application BH2012-02416, 151, 151A, Marine Parade in Rottingdean. Um, the recommendation is to grant. Can I see all those in favour, please? Eight. Eight. And all those against? Two, and that leaves uh, three. And any abstentions? Councillor Norman. Thank you very much. So that one is um, granted. Um, thank you very much. The remaining items are only for noting, and the meeting is now closed. But I think that must be a record. Would you agree, Hilary? Thank you. I can't promise that every time. So I think you owe me a tenner. <laughs> Not been <laughs> Sorry? Yes, yes. That would have been another 10 minutes. No, that, that one. I still don't understand what Councillor David is going on about his back pains. <laughs> Can you pass this to Councillor Norman, please? The um, St. Martin's Place one. Oh, As I said, if they want to see how a planning application yeah. yeah. I thought it might make them feel more comfortable. Yeah. 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 Yeah.